Hello everyone, this is Stephanie. Welcome to another video. So we're going to make the signet pendant today to go with the earrings that we made recently. So here's the pendant. So a lot of fun to make this pendant. It's a lot of fun beading, like all different kinds of um, embellishing, but not hard at all. You just have to take breaks along the way. If you decide to stop in the middle, just pause it and like take a picture of where you are so that you can get back to it. That's the only challenging part is that you know, you just want to make sure you don't lose your place. All right, so let's get materials list going and we'll let's get, get the materials list going. So you need some gem duos, four millimeter pearls, three millimeter pearls, four millimeter bicone, eight millimeter chiton, a little stop bead. I've got an 11 o Miyuki and an 11 o Toho, three millimeter bugle bead, a 15 o Toho seed bead, and I've got a little Charlotte here. I've got a ribbon, which I will see if I can find for you. Uh, I've got some eight pound fireline black satin. I've got a case with all different size needles in it so I can choose the needle I want to use. So everything is, will be listed in the description box below the video. So click the down arrow to show more. The box will open and all the materials, colors, shapes, sizes, anything I need to add because sometimes I add things down there will be down there. So please don't forget to um, check that description box. Okay, let's get started. Let's get started. So thread your needle with about five and a half feet of thread. Put on a stop bead so that you have about two feet from your stop bead to the tail thread right here. So this, after the stop bead is, you know, you're going to have about two feet and the rest you'll have about, you'll have maybe close to four feet, something like that. All right, so I've picked up and dropped down to my stop bead, Gem Duo, 11 -o, four millimeter pearl and 11 -o. I just did that four times. Okay, a good time to just uh, address some comments that I got about um, the beads I'm using. So I got some comments saying, the last few videos I've done, you have to have the collection to make those items. No, 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 you do not have to have the collection. I thought I was clear about that. I'm sorry if I wasn't. I present the collection because I love Eureka's collections and any boxes or collections or whatever that I present, it's only because I love them and otherwise I would not show them on my channel, but you don't need the collection. I link the beads separately as well in the description box. So if you just wanna buy the beads, you can just buy the beads or check your stash or buy any beads that you like, but you do not have to have the collection to make any of the items that I make. All right, so let's move on. Sew these into a circle. So I'm just gonna sew up through that first bead. That's the Gem Duo. After my stop bead. So this is what it looks like. And now you're just going to reinforce all the way around. So go through all the beads again and come out a pearl. So whatever, you know, just exit one of the pearls. Okay, so here I've um, reinforced everything. I'm exiting a, pearl, exiting a pearl. I'm just going to pick up a bugle bead and I'm gonna sew through the next pearl. Just like that. And then I'm just gonna repeat that all the way around. So a good time to um, address another comment. So I got a comment from, I mean, and these are very few comments, but I like everybody to be happy. I'm a people pleaser. So the comment was, I've been using obscure beads that you can't find. Um, well, the only, I think the only new bead that I've been using and I've resisted it for a long time is a chiton, like the Preciosa chitons in settings. And I, I do, I usually pull them out of the settings and then I bezel them. But, you know, now that I've tried to do a few um, with the settings, I kind of like them. You know, they're, it's a fun addition and it gives you a whole other, you know, way of looking and connecting pieces to make all different kinds of jewelry. So while that's something that I usually don't use on my channel, I've been enjoying incorporating that. And they're really, they're not obscure, they're really easy to find. Really, you can find, if you have the chitons, um, you know, in your stash, you can always just buy the settings. So it's really, you don't have to buy the chiton in the setting. You can get the settings separately. So, you know, check that out and see what you think, because I really want you to try some new things. And just like I'm trying some new things and, um, you know, it really, you know, it kind of expands your, uh, your beading a little bit. Going down to the last bugle bead. So picking up a bugle bead, I'm going to sew through. The 
the next pearl. I'm just kind of, kind of pushing them into place like that. So there we go. This is what we have so far. Okay, so I've come all the way around. I'm exiting in a pearl, exiting in a pearl. So I'm just going to sew through the next 11 o the gem duo, and the next 11 o So just like that. Okay, so I'm exiting that 11 o after the gem duo. I'm going to pick up five of my 15 o's and I'm going to sew through the next 11 o before the gem duo and the gem duo. I'm just going to place those right around the pearl like that. And then I'm going to advance through the next 11 0. And I'm just going to repeat that all the way around. Coming down to my last five 50 nos, exiting this 11 0, I'm going to sew through this 11 0, and I'm going to go right straight through the gem duo. Like that. And then I'm going to just sew through the top hole of that gem duo. And this is what I have so far. Hey, okay, this is what I have so far. I'm exiting the top hole of a gem duo, and this is the right side. So I'm going to just flip my piece over, take off my stop bead, and thread my needle. And this is what it looks like. So here I've taken off my stop bead, thread my needle. I'm exiting the bottom hole of a gem duo. I'm just going to advance my needle through the 11 o right there. And if you notice on the earring video, I called that a 15 o and I did put in the description box below the, that video that this, you know, you, you're going through an 11 o I just misspoke. So here you're going through that 11 o And then you're going through the pearl. So just like that. So you want to be exiting a pearl. Okay, so I'm going to pick up five 15 O's and I'm going to, I'm exiting the pearl. I'm going to sew through the next pearl. So now we're making the cup for the bezel. So this is going to kind of stick up like that. And you're going to repeat that all the way around. So good time to answer another question. So here are my five 15 O's. I'm going through the next pearl. So a question I, I get a lot is can I use um, Miyuki and Toho interchangeably? Um, and the short answer is, well, yes and no. As long as you can stick to the count that I'm using, so in other words, I have five of my Toho's on here, 15 O's, as long as five Miyuki's fit there, you're fine with that. Sometimes Toho, or Toho is a little bit different shape bead. It's not as round. It's a little more straight on the sides. It almost reminds me of a little, sort of little Delica, like a 15 O Delica. Um, so as long as you can keep the count the same, that's fine. And the, you know, the pattern the same. So like here, I have five here. You want to put five Miyuki's there. So, you know, you just have to check that out and see if that's going to work with whatever beads you're using. If you're using a different bead than I'm using. All right, so finish your, um, your round and then we'll continue. Putting on my last group of five through the next pearl. So now I have, you know, those little 15 O's kind of sticking up little like so. I'm going to, I'm missing the pearl, I'm going to advance through the first three 15 O's that I put on. Just like that. Okay, so I am exiting that, um, that third bead of the first group of five that we put on. So we've come, we came out of the pearl, we sewed up through the three, exiting right here. I'm going to pick up four 15 O's and I'm going to sew through bead number three of the next group of five. And do that again for 15 O's. I'm going to sew through bead number three of the next group of five. Let's do that again for 15 O's. So through the next, the third bead of the next group of five. And I'm going to pop my stone in, and I'm just going to pop it in face down. Do my last four 15 O's, 
And I'm going to sew through that original third bead of that first group of five that I put on. So hold it, hold your chiton with your thumb and just give it a pull like that. And then I'm just going to, I'm exiting the, this um, 15 0 right here, I'm going to sew through the four that I put on, just the four, like that. And you know, your chiton's probably going to move around a little bit. This one's, I think, a Swarovski, so it's a little bit bigger. So then I'm going to skip this bead and sew through the next four. So I'm just going to sew through the four that I put on around, around my bezel until I tighten that bezel up. Okay, so I've reinforced this back here with my stone in there. And um, just by sewing through the four beads in between each of those corner beads, pulling it nice and tight, and then I just... Uh, you can sew this thread in. So I came down through one of these through here and I put a knot right here. You don't want to put too many knots in this because we're going to be going through these beads a lot and adding a lot of beads on. So you just pop the one knot in somewhere and you should be fine. Just don't knot over here on the four beads because we're going to be um, using those again, uh, you know, as we continue. All right, so get that done. Come back and we'll move on. Okay, so I've sewn in my back thread and this is what it looks like. I'm staying on the back, but I'm going to use the front thread. So you have so here. If I turned it over, here's the front. Um, but I'm going to so I'm going to be using that thread. But I want it on the back because this is where I'm going to connect everything is around the back. So we're using that front thread. Your back thread is already sewn in. Um, so we're going to move on. But just let me get to another question um, uh, because the next you know several clips are going. You know we're going to have to really concentrate. So real quickly, why do I use black? Why do I use black thread for every video? The reason I use black thread is because I want you to be able to see my thread path. So most of the time when I make a video, I'll use lighter color beads so you can see what I'm doing. And then the black against it shows exactly where I'm going. So really that's the reason. I use um, black satin, you know, for a lot of my pieces anyway, but especially for video, I will always use it so you can see where I'm going. All right, let's move on. So I'm using my front thread. I'm exit, but I'm staying on the back because I want to connect in the back. So here I'm exiting the top hole of a gem duo. I'm going to pick up a 15-0, a bugle bead and a 15-0. And let me just pull in a little bit. And I'm going to sew through, the. see that group of four that we put on? I'm going to sew through the two middle beads. So let me get my needle in there. So the two middle beads of the four, just like that. Now I'm going to pick up a 15-0, a bugle bead, and a 15-0. And I'm going to sew through the top hole of the next gem duo. So we're building some structure here and putting on beads we can connect to. So this is what I have so far. So I'm going to repeat this all the way around. So picking up a 15-0, bugle bead, and a 15-0. Exiting the top hole of the gem duo, I'm going to sew through the two center beads of the four that's surrounding the bezel there, like that. And I'm going to pick up a 15-0, a bugle bead, and a 15-0, and I'm going to sew through the top hole of the next gem duo. So you're just going to repeat that all the way around. Okay, adding my last 15-0, bugle bead 15-0, so I'm exiting those two little beads in the, in the center of the group of four. I'm going to sew through the top hole of the next gem duo. It's like that. Okay, so here we are. We're exiting the gem duo. I'm just going to sew down. So you've got all your bugle beads on, and I'm going to sew down through this 15-0, bugle bead 15-0. Just like that. Then I'm going to pick up an 11-0 and I'm going to sew up through this 15-0, get my needle in there, and the bugle bead, but just the 15-0 and the bugle bead. So from here to here, but don't go through that 15-0 at the top. So I'll be exiting, so I'm going to pull that into place, and this is where my bead goes, and I'm exiting the bugle bead. Okay, so I've turned it to the right side for a second. Um, so when I turn it back over, see that we're still using that same thread. We're exiting the bugle bead here. So I want you to pick up of an 11-0, a gem duo, 11-0, gem duo, 11-0, gem duo, and an 
So I just want to, I'm facing it this way because I just want to make sure you put the bead, you know, the, the gem that was on correctly. So just like that. But I'm, now I'm going to go attach through the back here. So I'm exiting this bugle. I'm going to sew down through this bugle. So just, you know, I'm not going through the 15 I'm going through the bugle, the um, 15 like that, through this 11 like that, through this 15 bugle bead, and now I want you to go through that next, that 15 here. Okay. So this is what it looks like, like on the back. I'm exiting that 15 -0. This is what it looks like on the front. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, this is what it looks like so far. So here, I turn it over to the front. This is what it looks like. So we're just going to continue on using the back beads as our connections. So I'm exiting this little 15 -0 here. I'm going to pick up two 11 -0s, a 15 -0 and two 11 -0s. I'm going to sew through this 15 -0 on the other side of that gem duo, and I'm going to go down the bugle bead and that next 15 -0. That's what it looks like. Okay, let's move on. So we're, we've come down here through the 15 -0 bugle bead 15 -0, picking up my 11 -0. So you just, this is just repeating the sequence here. I'm going to sew through the 15 -0 and the bugle bead. I'm going to give it a little pull just to place that 11-0 right there. Okay, next up I'm going to pick up an 11-0, gem duo, 11 -0. gem duo, 11-0, gem duo, 11 -0, just like we did over there. And so if I turn it to the front, you want to make sure that your gem duos are facing up like that. And then I'm just going to sew through, like we did before, this bugle bead and the 15 -0. I'm going to come through the 11 -0 that I put on and make sure you're like really seating these nicely. Give them a nice pull. I'm going to sew up through this 15 -0 bugle bead and the 15 -0 right there. Like that. Okay, next up, I'm going to pick up my two 11 0s, my 15 0 and two 11 0s. I'm going to sew through. The 15 -0, bugle bead 15 on the other side. So just like that. So now that you've got, I've you know, done a repeat of these units. Now you're just going to go on and continue on your own. Remember your 11 -0 here, and then just continue until you get um, the entire piece. All your all four groups of the um, gem duos and the 11 0s and 15 -0. I have come around to the end and I'm putting on my last two 11 0s, 15 0, 11 0 to embellish this, the top of that last gem duo. So just like that. So I've come down, you know, the um, bugle bead, uh, the 15 0 bugle bead 15 0. I'm going to sew through this 11 0. Like that. And then you know what? I'm going to tie this thread off because I am i don't have that much thread left. And I, I figure we've been going through the beads a lot. So I don't want the thread to get soft or, you know, and lose its integrity. So just go ahead and, you know, sew around and, and put a, a half inch knot or two in. We'll still get through the rest of the beads. And then we're going to thread another needle with, you know, maybe three feet of thread. And we'll continue on embellishing. Okay, this is what we have so far. So here's the front. Here's the back. We did sew that thread in. Um, so just a note, this is a perfect place for you to stop for the day. So if you've been working on this for a long time and you're tired, take a break, make a cup of tea, get some cookies. That's what I did. I had some lunch also, and now I'm ready to beat again. But I could just as easily just put it down and pick it up again tomorrow. So this is a really good spot to do that. So, um, you know, just decide whether or not you want to go on or not. Um, and we will continue. So we're going to add a new thread. I've uh, threaded my needle with about three feet of thread. I put on a stop even left enough of a tail to sew in. And I've sewn through this 
gem duo right here. So this group of three, I'm going to come out of the bottom hole of this one right here. Okay, so I'm exiting this bottom hole of this gem duo. I'm picking up four fifteenos. I'm going to sew through the top hole like that and make sure those kind of pop in front of the other beads like that. I'm going to pick up a 15 4 millimeter bicone and a 15 -0. I'm going to sew through the next, the top hole, whoops, of the next gem duo. Like that. Do that again. 15 4 millimeter bicone, 15 -0. Sew through the top hole of the next gem duo, just like that. Then I'm going to pick up four 15 -0s. I'm going to sew through the bottom hole of the gem duo I'm exiting. Like that. I'm going to make sure that those are sitting nicely. Get a pull. Then I'm going to sew through the top hole of that gem duo. So this is what I have so far. Let's move on. So I'm exiting the top hole of this gem duo. I'm going to pick up two 15 O's and I'm going to sew through that little 15 O that's in between the um, blue 11 O's there. Just make sure those stay in the back like that. I'm going to pick up two 15 O's and I'm going to sew through the top hole of that gem duo. I'm going to sew through the bottom hole of the gem duo like so, and then I'm going to pick up four 15 O's and I'm going to sew through the top hole of that gem duo. So here I've started my embellishment right here. Okay, so what you're going to do at this point is just repeat what we just did. So we remember we came out of here and we put on the bicones, went around, then we did this little embellishment in here. So now you're going to add the bicones again and do that little embellishment in between again. And you're just going to repeat that all the way around. And what I'll do is I'll put a time stamp where it begins and where the the um, repeat ends. So you'll be doing this up to here and then this will be the repeat again and so on. So there'll be a time stamp and an end stamp on the screen. I'll put it in the description box below the video too so that you you know, you know where to go to repeat the pattern. Coming down to the end of the pattern repeat, so I've just put my bicones on, I came around, I'm exiting the top of this gem duo, just gonna pick up my two 15 O's, put them right there, gonna pick up two 15 O's, and I'm gonna sew through the top hole of that gem duo, and this is what you can have so far. This is what we have so far. So we're exiting the top hole of this gem duo here. You know, after finishing all that outside embellishment, I'm going to sew through the bottom hole of that gem duo. Like that. And then I'm going to sew up through those four seed beads on the side of that gem duo. So that's three and Four. Okay, so you'll be exiting those four, you know, up the, the four uh, 50 nos on the side of this gem duo. Pick up a three millimeter pearl, and I'm going to sew down the four 50 nos on the side of that next gem duo. Give that a pull. And that's going to place that little pearl right there. I'm going to continue through the gem duo right there. And that next 15 0. I know this is crazy, but fun. I mean, you know, even if you just take away one sort of little technique, you know, then it's it's just worth it to play, right? Okay, I'm going to, so I went through the gem duo, the, the um, 11 0 and the gem duo. So I'm exiting the bottom hole of that center gem duo right there of the three. Just like that. Okay, so I'm exiting that bottom hole of this, the middle gem duo of that group of three. I'm going to pick up a Charlotte 
a bugle bead and a charlotte. Now you can use the 15 0 here, but I'm using a charlotte because I just think it just a little bit better fit. But I, the other um, sample, I used a 15 0. So I'm going to sew through that center bead of that group of five that is surrounding the pearl, like that. I'm going to pick up my 15 0 or charlotte and bugle bead 15 0 or charlotte, and I'm going to sew through the other side of that gem duo. I'll give that a nice pull. So that's what it looks like so far. Okay, I'm going to sew through that 11 -0 that's right after the um, gem duo that I came through. You know, it's a little tight in here, so you're going to have to sort of bend it around and play with it a little bit, but it'll work. And then I'm going to go through the gem duo. And then a nice pull. And then I'm going to sew up through these four 15 O's on the side of the gem duo. And that has put on my little embellishment right there. So I'm just going to repeat from the pearl. You know, I'm exiting here. I'm going to put a pearl here. I'll do it with you one more time. I'm going to pick up that pearl, the, the three millimeter pearl, millimeter pearl. I'm exiting these 15 O's. I'm going to sew down through the next group of 15 O's. Like so. Then I'm going to advance through the Gem Duo 11 -0 and the middle Gem Duo there. So you want to be exiting and give it a nice pull. And you want it to just like, just snug it up a bit like that. So we're exiting that middle Gem Duo. I'm going to pick, a pick up a 15 -0 bugle bead and a 15 -0 or replace it with a Charlotte. Exiting here, I'm going to sew through that middle bead of the five that are surrounding the pearl. 15 0 or Charlotte, bugle bead 15 0 or Charlotte. I'm going to sew through the other side of that gem duo and I'm going to give it a nice pull. Make sure they're seating nice. And then I'm just going to work my around, way around again through this, so through the 11 0 and the gem duo, like that. And you want to make sure you're pulling it and that it's nice and straight. So here I'm exiting the gem duo. You know, so I've come through this one and the gem duo. I'm going to sew up through the four 15 O's. Whoops. On this side. And then I'm just going to add the pearl and do the same thing all the way around. Okay, so I'm down at the end. I've put my last 15-0 bugle bead 15 on. I'm just, you know, I'm, I've come through the gem duo, through the 11 through the next gem duo. So this is just the ending here, like that. So this is what it looks like so far. Okay, so we're exiting. I'm, I'm chuckling because this is a lot, isn't it? But I mean, I'm just having so much fun. So here we're exiting the gem duo. I'm going to go up these 15 O's right here on the side. So we've gotten all our pearls on and all our bugle beads. Like that. So I've come up the four 15 O's. Now I have, you can stop here or I have one more embellishment if you want to go for it. So <laughs> we're going to do that next. Okay, let's um, add one more embellishment, which is optional. So I'm exiting those four, the four 15 O's. I'm just going to sew through the top hole of that gem duo. I'm going to advance through the 15 O bicone 15 O. And then I'm going to pick up, let's try three of our 15 O's. Might need four, I'm not sure. Probably three. And I'm going to sew through the next 15 O bicone and 15 O. So I'm just going to embellish the top, yeah that worked, of that, of that um, center gem duo. So then I'm going to work my way around. Maybe I'll work on the back here. 
I'm, I'm exiting that 15 out. I'm just going to have to go through these beads here, so I'm going to go through the gem duo. The 15 O's. Like so. Pop these. And this is actually good because it's going to, you know, tighten everything up. I'm going to go through the gem duo. 15 O bicone 15 O. like that and you're going to add your three 15 O's and so through the next bicone uh, 15 O bicone 15 O like that and you're just going to do that all the way around until you have all your points embellished. Okay, I have all my bicones embellished, and now I'm just going to sew this thread in, and we'll add the the um, bale separately. So this is what it looks like. You can embellish any way you like. You can, you know, keep going and embellish more things <laughs> if you like. But I think that's looking pretty good. It's I'm happy with this so far. I think it looks really nice. There you go. All right, so either tie off, tie off that thread and then we will add the bail. So I've already done it here um, and it came out so nice that I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to redo it for you um, because when I did this, I messed up a couple of clips. So anyway, you're going you're gonna to put your bail right here. So I've threaded my needle with a couple of feet of thread, put on a stop bead. I left enough of a tail to sew in. I'm just going to sew up through the 15 -0 bicone 15 -0 on the side of that um, gem duo. Now, um, if you have not made this yet, you can leave off one embellishment, you know, the embellishment around one of those gem duos. That was the last embellishment we did. Um, but it doesn't really matter. If it's there, it's fine. Mine's there. It's just in there. So it doesn't really matter. All right, so I'm exiting that 15 0. I'm going to pick up four 15 0s. And I'm going to sew through the 15 0 bicone 15 0 on the other side. I'm just going to place those down just like that. Now I'm going to flip my piece over to the back and I'm going to pick up four 15 O's and I'm going to sew through the that middle gem duo right there and I'm going to pick up four 15 O's and I'm going to sew through this 15-0 bicone 15 -0. Like that. Let me just get it in there. There we go. This is what it looks like so far. And on the front. I'm exiting, so I, you know, this 15 0 after the bicone. I'm going to sew up through the first two 15 0s I put on, you know, when I first started. So these two. Just want to make sure you keep your back thread tight, or you could sew that thread in. So here's the hair where I'm starting the herringbone, and back here is my embellishment. Just ignore that. So here I'm starting my herringbone right there. Picking up two of my 15 O's, I'm going to sew down through the f these two on the other side. The two 15 O's on the other side. Just setting, setting it up now. I'm going to sew through the gem duo. Let's move that out of the way. Like so. And then I'm going to sew up these three 15 O's on the other side. And I'm going to pull it nice and tight. That's what it should look like. 
just going to, I'm going to continue on with herringbone. So picking up two 15 O's, I'm going to sew down this bead on the other side and then up these two. So down one, up two, picking up two 15 O's, down one on the other side and up And I'm just going to repeat that until I have, you know, a bale, you know, until the piece is long enough so that I can attach on the other side and that I can fit whatever I want to fit through here. What, whatever chain, I'm going to put a ribbon on so I made mine pretty small. Um, so this is what we have so far. So just continue on making the length of your bale and then we'll connect to the other side. Okay, so I have a number of herringbone stitches on for my bale. So I'm just going to turn it over. I'm going to pick up two of my 11 O's, like so. And I'm going to sew through the last two of the four I put on over here. So there's one, two, three, four, so three and four. I'm going to pick up an 11 O, and this is the one from the Toho 11 O. And I'm going to sew through the last two on the other side, like that. Then I'm going to pick up my two 11 O's and I'm going to sew through the beads on the herringbone, the other side of the herringbone. And when I give that a little pull, this is what it looks like. Okay, so I, I have went up a few of the herringbone stitches and then I came down on the other side again. So here I'm exiting that bottom herringbone stitch again. So I'm just sort of, I'm just reinforcing now. So I'm going to go through the two 11 O's. I'll tighten it up in a second. The two, those la the second two of the four. I'm pulling it now. Now I'm going to skip that 11 O I put on in the center and I'm going to sew up through the next two, the, the, la the two of that group of four. And I'm going to pull that. When I pull that, it kind of pops that bead out. It makes it nice and tight. And then I'm just going to go up here, up a little bit, and then I'm just going to sew this thread in. You, you know, you can go up and around and then sew the thread in over here somewhere. And that's going to put your bail on. Okay, pendant is done. So what you can do, um, if you, my tension was a little tight towards the um, last bit of my uh, beading. So mine curved quite a bit you know, on this side. So what you can do is put it on a flat surface and just give it a little push down if you want it flatter. It doesn't really matter. You can, um, you know, it can curve. It, it's, I think it's pretty either way. I put it on this pretty teal ribbon that I had in my stash. I'll give you some uh, links to places where you can purchase ribbon in the description box below the video. Here are the earrings. So here's your earring and pendant, your little swans. Uh, so I want to thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.